All right, what's going on, guys? Your boy King Red Diamonds, and I'm back for another Neo 2 video. Um, continuing on with my weapon series, where I go over every single weapon, in, where I'm going to go over every single weapon in the game. I'm going to show you the skills. Uh, I'm going to show. I'm going to go through them, show you which ones I would recommend you use, show you which ones I probably wouldn't recommend, and also give my overall thoughts on the weapon itself. Then um, usually I go at the end of the video and I show a little bit of gameplay of how I usually use the weapons and what skills I use and all that stuff. So um, if you guys are enjoying the videos like this, please let me know. Um, if you guys want to see something else, let me know. Um, I'm always open to suggestions of doing whatever you guys might want to see. So um, by all means, in the comment section, let me know what you guys want to see. Let me know if you like the videos that are coming out. Let me know how, um, if you like the format, if you want me to switch it up, if you want me to change it up, what kind of videos you want to see. You know, I'm open to all the suggestions. So um, please let me know, and I'll definitely try to get to it when I can. But um, before I get into it, I ask you guys like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate everyone who's already subscribed. Um, if, you're if you watch the videos and you're not subscribed, it's perfectly fine. I understand. Um, but if you want to see more content of mine, by all means, subscribe and you will not be let down. Um, but yeah, we're going to get into it. And I thank everyone else for subscribing. And yeah, so today I'm going to go over the Odachi. Now, the Odachi is um, a bit of a tricky weapon. The reason why is because most of the Odachi's move set is tailored to basically switch stances, just like the Swiss Glaive, without the um, use of key pulsing and stuff like that. So usually, when you use the Swiss Glaive, you'll switch stances because that's what the the, the weapon pretty much wants you to do. Um, in terms of Odachi, the weapon, excuse me, the weapon doesn't, um, it doesn't heavily, um, it doesn't like heavily base itself off of switching stances more so that the moves of the Odachi make you switch stances so like for example if you're using square to combo and you press maybe triangle at the end of a combo one of the moves on this Odachi will put you in um, either high mid or low stance basically so you could be in mid stance do a combo finish it off a triangle and then end up in high stance or you can do attacks in high stance, hit triangle at the end of a combo and end up in low stance. So it all depends on um, how you want to use your Odachi. Now you'll see a lot of like a lot of people, like if you look up the weapons for Odachi, like look up how to use it or whether it's a good weapon or stuff like that. Most people will say you want to stay out of low stance for the Odachi, which I understand because the Odachi is pretty much a high damage weapon. Um, it's made for people who um, have high defense and high damage basically so tank bills tanky bills bills that can take punishment while also dealing out a mass amount of damage so Odachi works very very well with tanky bills heavy armor all that stuff but um yeah if you if, if, if you it says you they say you might not want to go in low stance but low stance is very good for maneuverability and dodging not more so attacking um, I wouldn't say you want to attack in low stance. You will more so want to try to be in mid or high stance when you attack. But if you want to dodge or get out the way, you can definitely go in low stance. Um, more so with the Odachi though, you're not. If, if you're making an Odachi build, you have no choice but to pretty much be in um, be in like a toughness. Like you, you have you pretty much have to have a toughness unless you are absolutely godly with the odachi and its move set now if you're not you are forced to pretty much wear heavy armor just because of how slow some of the odachi's moves are and um basically the wind up time they have like a lot of odachi moves have long wind ups but they deal massive damage so if you're not tanky you will die but um yeah we're gonna get into it but um, as you know, every single weapon starts out with these four free skills pretty much. So uh, I'll go over the four and then we'll start with which one I recommend you start with first. So we have uh, Twin Moons, Imperative Strike, Tiger's Blade, and Bolting Boar. Now, all of these are actually very good. Like a lot of weapons usually when you start off with um with these four first skills a lot of weapons actually 
only have between maybe one or two useful skills in the first part of the tree and then the rest of them you just you uh, acquire to open paths up for the rest but for the odachi all four of these are actually very very good and um i'll explain why so the first move i would honestly recommend you get really is twin moons the reason why is because twin moons is a combo finisher so um combo finishers pretty much is like the basic of any um fighting game pretty much like a combo finisher is literally going to be something that you use in almost every fighting game so twin moons is a very good move to pick up first especially for anyone who is using this weapon in high stance um, next we'll go with imperative strike it's pretty much an ei but you spin around um, as you can see you do this you it's the same button command as an ei it even looks the same as the ei because you're unsheathing your weapon very very quickly it doesn't do as much damage as the ei would um, in my opinion but it's still a very good move to use um so i would definitely pick this up right after twin moons no question um next we'll go to ti uh, tiger's blade now tiger's blade is good as well uh, the reason why is because it allows you to get behind your enemy but also attack from above so as you can see you do the little you uh you you stick your odachi in the ground and vault yourself up in the air over your enemy while slicing down it's very good it'll, it'll allow you to get behind your enemy and um also attack while doing so so very good technique for sure and then bolting boar bolting boar is a counter um this this counter is actually one of the easiest counters to do the reason why is because you're only um tapping l1 at the right time most other counters it requires you to tap l1 and square or maybe l1 and triangle just to you know pull off the counter itself but with bolting board you only have to tap l1 at the right moment and you'll pretty much pull this counter off another thing that's actually very very good about this counter is that it works against certain yokai now if you if you know and you've played this game before you know that most counters only work against human enemies but the odachi actually has one of those um rare counters that will actually work against a yokai um, i know i've seen it used against uh, an epon before um i think it was used against a um i think it was also used against i'm not sure if it was used against a yoki or not but i know it definitely worked on an epon and I know I think it worked on an um, Agaki or something like that. So um, I know that there are certain yokai that you can definitely pull this move off on, and it's actually very, very good. So in order of what I would go with for your first skills is definitely Twin Moons. Then I would go Imperative, Tiger's Blade, Bolt and Boar. All right. So the next one I will work my way up towards as quickly as you possibly can is Moonlit Snow. Moonlit Snow is possibly the staple move for the Odachi. Um, just as EI is for the sword or Sign of the Cross is for the dual swords, Moonlit Snow is going to be your heavy hitter, your main you know, skill that you're going to want to throw out as, as much as possible because it does a massive amount of damage. Um, Moonlit Snow and Moonlit Snow Redux. Uh, Moonless Low Redux is pretty much um, Moonless Snow, just much, much faster. It does not hit as hard as the regular Moonless Snow, but it still does a good amount of damage. It just allows you to pull the move off faster, basically. As you can see, this one is a lot slower, but much more powerful. And then this one is a lot quicker and a, l a little less powerful, but not. it's still a very good technique, no question. Um, but since you probably won't be able to get this until you, as you can see, it says you have to clear away of the Warrior Veteran. Um, you try to work your way to this one as quickly as possible. Um, before you can get there, though, I would probably go with um, one of the walk the, um, the walking winds. So you can go with uh, walking wind earth, walking wind heaven, or uh, what's the other one? Walking wind man. Either one of these. Now these right here, the walking wind techniques, are the ones I was telling you that will pretty much change your stance. So as you can see. In this one, you start in um, you start from mid stance, and you'll either end up in low or high stance once you press triangle, depending on which one you set it up, uh, depending on which one you put it in. So you can end up in low or high stance, um, depending on which stance you put it in. This one right here, you start in uh, low stance, so you can end up in high or mid stance, and then this one you start in high stance, so you can end up in mid or low stance. So basically, like I said, they switch your stances and allow you to um, be able to combo 
into that stance without having to key pulse and flux basically so uh, we'll just pick up all three of these just because they pretty much all serve the same purpose okay so yeah um, as you can see they don't really do like anything extra they're not like super flash or anything like that they literally just um, it's just a combo ender that it puts you in another stance allowing you to not have to flux and you know do too much with your with your mechanics um, if you go up every single one of these has a sunset breeze on them so we got sunset breeze heaven sunset breeze earth and then we have a uh, sunset breeze man so again um, these are pretty much stance switchers but instead of you know combo enders with square and then triangle these are used with triangle and then square so um, usually triangle is your strong attack so if you decide you want to do a strong attack and then you press square afterwards the sunset breezes will kick in pretty much so I can go ahead and grab those for you boom now we have all the stand switching skills pretty much so again we have walking winds earth walking winds heaven and walking winds man the walking winds techniques are the square combos and triangle combo ender and then we have the sunset breeze earth Sunset Breeze Heaven and Sunset Breeze Man, which are the strong attack and square combo enders. Okay, so um, those are are good to are good to get early. Um, they're also very useful for like again, like I said, putting you in different stances. That way, you don't have to worry about fluxing too much. Even though you still might want to flux just in case, but um, in terms of your combat, um, say you decide that you say there's a certain move, like for example, your uh, Moonless Snow. Say your moonless snow is in high stance. Um, say you have that in high stance, and you don't, and you don't have the mind to flux into high stance. You can use your uh, waking wind or your sunset breeze to put you into high stance, and then boom, throw out your moonless snow. I'm sorry, somebody text me. Um, but yeah, you can use those. Put you. Uh, you can use one of your walking winds or your sunset breezes to put you in high stance. Boom, throw out your moonless snow and you've got your combo down but uh, those are that that's it for those for right now um, the next skill I would definitely work towards is yes um, try to get to moonless snow so we're gonna get charging bull cuckoos uh, call and moonless snow and now I just throw in moonless snow redux so I will go back to these this right here is um, a combo ender as well this is for anyone who, for anyone you might um, drain their key. So if an enemy, if you're attacking an enemy and you press triangle and they happen to have zero key, you'll knock them down. So it's not really bad. Actually, it's pretty good, especially for humans. Um, it, it gives you that extra hit, and then it also leaves them open for attack while they're on the ground or a final blow, either one. So um, charging bull is not bad at all. If you can get, if you can, you know, time it correctly, as soon as you drain an enemy's key, you'll get it off every time and um, again like I said it opens up for a final blow or any type of attack while they're on the ground now cuckoo's call is as you can see it's um this is what I mean by you might want to have high toughness now it does block as you can see it doesn't hit your armor technically it does block but it can hit you like someone can hit you while you're doing this move so um, it's a lot better to have heavy armor rather than um medium or light like i'll say this as long as you can get your character into a toughness or a a toughness um odachi will be just fine uh, you don't have to technically wear heavy armor there's certain medium armors that'll put you in a toughness or a toughness um just you just got to figure out which ones those are and which ones you would like to use but um cuckoo's call as you can see is like a it's a guard into an attack so it's kind of like a counter like those the like I said before the L1 square type counter so it's kind of like a counter into an attack as you can see it blocks and then follows up with two little um, spinning strikes uh, I, I honestly I don't use um, like pretty much counter type moves a lot um, on the Odachi I think the only counter type move I might use is bolting board just because it's a lot easier to time rather than you know doing it this way so um, me personally I will forego Kaku's call but you would definitely have to open this path. You definitely have to suck this skill to open up your Moonlit Snows and Moonlit Redux. Now, on to Moonlit Snow. As you can see, Moonless, Moonless Snow is activated by holding L1 and pressing triangle and then triangle again, at basically um, like you're attacking. 
but um, as you can see it can be charged up to three times now you can just do a moonless snow by holding L to L1 and pressing triangle multiple times and you'll do the moonless snow but to get the most and maximum power out of it you sh you charge it up by holding triangle while you're holding L1 so as you can see how slow the attacks are he's charging them up boom uh uh and then you'll be you'll be hitting ridiculously hard there's actually a way that you can build a strictly moonlit snow build i think there's a way to roll moonlit snow damage on every piece of gear you have and stuff so like you can you can literally make a build centered strictly around moonlit snow and just decimate enemies um it's a very powerful technique it's the best technique in my opinion that the odachi has um but moonlit snow is definitely going to be one of the mainstays for this weapon and Moonless Snow Redux is literally just Moonless Snow, just much, much faster. Um, that's pretty much it. It's the same. It does a good. It it does it does. I wouldn't say it does the same damage. Moonless Snow does definitely does more damage, but Moonless Snow Redux is nothing. To, is nothing to sneer at or anything like that. It's still going to do a lot of damage. It'll output a lot of damage, and it actually works off of the Moonless Snow uh, damage. Uh, multiplier that you could put on your gear since it is technically moonlit snow so um, they work off the same multipliers and same damage scales so um, e both of these are very very good um, next we're going to go with uh, tail strike and crashing waves now tail strike and crashing waves are very good for breaking the key on enemies or breaking the guard on enemies in my opinion crashing waves is a lot easier and a lot better uh, just because it's a charge attack and charge attacks do do I think increase damage so uh, increase key damage so um, crashing waves will be my go-to for breaking the key but you can definitely use tail strike um, just be careful when using it because of that first strike and the second one when you wind up the the, uh, the butt of the sword you could be open for attack but with crashing waves it's quick and easy boom you can even shatter the key on an enemy and then they're done for so um, I always go with crashing waves even though tail strike is a good um, backup um, next we're gonna go with ground quake now ground quake is not bad at all um, it does take up the slap for moonlit snow so um, you may not use it as much um, some people may find use for it but like again like I said it takes up the same slot as moonlit snow so um, your choice would pretty much be between moonlit and ground quake now you can actually set both of them up in different um, stances if you rely if that's how you want to use it um, maybe you go like moonlit snow in mid stance and ground quake in high stance or you even go moonlit snow in high stance and ground quake in mid stance either one um, but um, like I, as you can see it's not bad it actually does a good amount of damage against multiple enemies like if you ever encounter more than one enemy um, which in this game you should try your best to only fight one enemy at a time two is maximum I would go with any more than two then you're pretty much like gonna get overwhelmed just because like this isn't like real life or like made up movies type stuff where people will stand there and wait for one person to attack no they will all attack you at once if they need to so um, just make sure that um, if you do use this technique it is going to be good against multiple enemies just make sure you're trying to fight to maximum I'll say um, next we can go up to um, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about this one soon we're not going to get that yet next we can go up to devastating rush now devastating rush is actually um, just like um, is just like the sword technique I forget what is it called it is true and through devastating rush is pretty much the true and through of the odachi so um, as you can see it's a wind up boom and you and it the the only thing with devastating rush is that the distance is much better like the the reach of this technique is much better just because for one the odachi is a lot longer than the sword itself and then as you can see the slide and the dash forward is much further you get much more distance than you do with um true and through so devastating rush very good very good finishing move if your enemy is on like say your enemy is down to like minimum health and maybe you're down to minimum health and you don't want them to get the jump on you and you don't want them to you know hit you one time and kill you and push you all the way back to the respawn you could throw out a devastating rush 
and kill them from a distance boom you've closed the distance on them already and they're dead so devastating rush very good finisher very good farming tool as well um you can put um where is it you can put maybe uh where is it boom you can put mercenary strike on devastating rush and as you can see it increases the drop rate of items by 10% when defeating an enemy with a certain active skill so you can put mercenary strike on devastating rush and increase your chances of getting maybe um a certain weapon you wanted or maybe you can get a certain hidden um hidden technique that you may have wanted so um devastating rush definitely has its uses uh, it just depends on how you feel about using it but very good technique for sure if you want to get it um next we can go with uh retrograde flow now retrograde flow isn't bad at all either it lifts your opponent into the air as you can see um it's if they have zero key it also leaves them open for attacks especially after you lift them into the air so um if you can figure out how to put them like incorporate this into your tech into your combos and stuff like that by all means do so it's not a bad technique i'm not saying it's my first go-to nor am i saying it's my second but if you can definitely fit it into your combos i would i would find its use for sure it only works usually against um human enemies as you can um human enemies because most of the time whenever a yokai is out of z is on zero key um they're not going to um you wouldn't be able to lift them off the ground like that. Maybe a Gaki or something like that. But other than that, you wouldn't be able to lift like a Yoki or something off the ground just like that. Um, but it's not a bad technique at all. Then you have Dawn's Light, which is pretty much like the morning light from the sword, where if you're down, you press triangle to get up real quickly. Um, it's not the it's not something I would say that you absolutely need, because more than likely you're just going to be pressing X to get up and get out of the way as much as possible. So doing this um, might not be the first thing that comes to your mind. Swallowing again, this is something on the sword has that I honestly don't find much use for. It does create distance between you and your enemy, but more than likely um, you'll just be pressing X to get away from your enemy if you want to create distance instead of using this technique, so I won't get it. Um, next we have these two I'll come back to for now. I'm going to try to get the attack ones out the way first, and then I'll come back to those. Um, but uh, back to Thunderbolt. Now, Thunderbolt, as you can see, this technique looks awesome. Like, I can't even lie to you. This technique looks awesome. The only issue with this technique is that you are forced to take a hit. So, it's high risk, like high risk, high reward. Um, if you land this on an enemy, you'll deal a lot of damage. But, again, as you can see, you must take a hit before it activates completely. I can even read it to you. It says, hold your weapon aloft as, your, as you muster the energy to deal a devastating blow to the enemy. If hit while preparing to strike, the attack power of your downward strike will be enhanced. And if the enemy is a humanoid, they will be knocked down. So as you can see, it says that if you're hit, you get increased damage. But taking hits, especially in like um, depths of the underworld and like in like the, the the lower lower floors taking hits is very dangerous enemies can between one to three like one to three hits is enough to kill you honestly in in depths and stuff like that so this technique is very very risky to use now it is very like i said it looks very cool it's very powerful but you have to ask yourself does the reward outweigh the risk and in my opinion it does not unless you're absolutely one-shotting enemies with this technique it's not worth it in my opinion um unless like literally unless you can one-shot attack an enemy with this technique alone it's not worth it because again you could take up to three hits in the depths in the underworld even at a toughness you can take up to like three hits i'll even give you four nothing above it but maybe four but three hits you're gonna die so this move like again it's it is very good it's it, it, it does a lot of damage but it's not something that i would def it was it's not something me personally i would go for just because um i don't want to die so um making sure that if you're using this technique use it with caution okay 
but um this would be literally the last of the actual techniques that open up any other paths um that's pretty much all of them now i can go over these two now um clarity as you can see in hasten your key recovery by, by sacrificing movement speed can only be used when your, your short your sword is sheathed basically it and pre it, it 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 um increases your key recovery and slows you down now the reason why i find this absolutely useless is because for one if you have any type of if you have any skill on your on your um equipment your um accessories anything that has faster movement on a certain technique whether it be faster movement ninjutsu hit faster movement omio magic hit faster movement and riddle absorption um those are much better uh the reason why is because when you are you move very quickly and then if you have a barrier talisman barrier talisman already speeds up your key recovery so for you to use this technique just to sacrifice just to sacrifice your movement speed just for 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 better key recovery it's not you it's not worth it it's no point in having it honestly you it literally has it serves no purpose especially if you have those types of um effects on your person so getting clarity in my opinion is no point in having now if you want if you now if you can get you can unlock clarity you don't have to use it just so you can get like the relentless stuff and, and everything that way you can have your maximum amount of key whenever you you know, use your Odachi. Other than using this technique, it's no point. Because again, Barrier already gives you increased key recovery speed, and it also purifies Yokai Realms, which is a double whammy. And then, um, sacrificing your movement speed when you already are using your Odachi, which is technically supposed to be um, a heavy armor weapon, it, it, it it's a killer. It, it's no point. It really isn't. So, Clarity is not something I would go for unless that's something you want to use if you would like to use it by all means do so i don't recommend it and undaunted as you can see undaunted is um for pretty much blocking you stab you stab your weapon into the ground and brace yourself for a block this move in combat honestly i don't think it's worth it uh reason why is because look how long he waited right there and an enemy, you can stand there all day, and an enemy can just walk around you and, you know, attack you and stuff. A yokai is going to just fight right through that. So, this right here, um, I'm not sure I would use it. I've never used it when I've had, when I used the Odachi. I never used this technique. I never used these two at all. I did unlock them just to get to these parts and stuff, or get, like, just to have you know just because but other than that honestly i don't even think i've ever unlocked undaunted i unlocked this to get here but i've never used undaunted because i never found its usefulness in battle so um i don't think you really need it and you don't need tachi arts because this only increases your damage when you're at full health and you're not always going to be at full health um but that actually covers all the techniques for the odachi um i'll go over the the um, mystic arts and the extra skills in a second but um first i'm going to get these passives first and then uh where is there's armor piercer cool uh now with the odachi in terms of um the extra skills to get i would go for first the uh, i would go for the rule of thrusting um, and forego the defense arts until you have enough points. Um, other than that, uh, yeah. So I'll go uh, rule of thrusting, and then I'll unlock both of these right here. Boom. So um, rule of thrusting, you probably all, you guys already know what the armor piercer, the shadow strike, and the pass the afterlife is. Rule rule of thrusting is literally increases your damage on thrust attacks. That's it. And since the Odachi actually does do a lot of thrust attacks, you might want to increase the damage on it just to give you that extra edge in battle. And it's a passive, so technically it's always active no matter what. I mean, even if you don't do a thrust, it doesn't matter. Um, but when you do, it's still active. It's much better than like these, these right here and stuff like that, like these types of um, passives and everything, because they don't really do much for you other than you know, like if you're on low health or high health and stuff like this. But this is always going to be active regardless. Now. 
Um, one of the extra skills, this is Swirling Snow. You get this from fighting, um, what is his name? He's the ice giant, pretty much, that has the Odachi. I forget his name, but um, you get that from fighting him. It'll drop if you beat him. Um, it's actually not a bad technique at all. Um, the only thing about it is that you definitely are wide open while doing this. So if at any point, say you're fighting a yokai or something, yokai usually don't get staggered unless they have zero key. If they don't have zero key and you pull this technique off, they will slap you and knock you out of it. So um, be very careful when using this technique. Again, it's not bad at all. Um, I've actually used it a couple times and it worked and it actually, you know, does a good amount of damage. It's just that, like, again, you'll be open for uh, open for attacks, especially from like uh, archers and stuff like that. So be careful when using it. And then Dragon's Horn. Dragon's Horn is pretty much Dragon's Fang from the dual swords and the uh, katana, the, the single sword. It um, It's a grapple that absorbs the anima from your enemy and increases yours. Uh, very good. I use it um, just because, again, you know, you can never have enough anima. So uh, those are those hidden techniques that I have. Um, next, we're going to go to the Mystic Arts. So you got Shifting, uh, shifting Serenity. And then you have a uh, subtle blade. Shifting serenity reduces the key consumption when performing waking winds or sunset breezes. And then this increases the key damage of frontal attacks against enemies that are attacking. So basically, um, this um, pretty much, if an enemy is attacking you and you're attacking them at the same time, which is again, like I said, a lot of the move set, which is this right here, for example, this is a very good example of um, the move set of the Odachi, in which it pretty much makes you want to tank through hits while delivering hits. Like, if that doesn't make sense, basically, the Odachi makes you take a hit while delivering a hit. So you're basically getting your, it's, it's a purely offensive weapon. Now it can be defensive, yes, but it's purely offensive, and it require and, and it it makes you want to wear heavy armor. That way, you can just tank through any hits you get and deliver ridiculous damage. That's what subtle blade is for. And then this one just reduces your key consumption whenever you do uh, sunset breeze. Because if you don't know, when using Odachi, Odachi uses up a lot of stamina. Odachi is actually Adachi's damage actually scales with stamina and strength, and it uses up a lot of key when you when you like use it. I think you can maybe get off maybe like four, three to four continuous attacks with the Odachi before you completely run out of key, just because of how much it takes from you. So um, doing the Waking Winds and Sunset Breeze and having this equipped and stuff and active and everything, um, it allows you to save on that key and be able to continue a combo after pulling off one of these and stuff. And remember I told you the waking winds and sunset breezes pretty much switch your stances. So it helps you with say like when you switch stances, usually you would flux to switch stances. Once you switch stances with the waking winds or sunset breeze, this kicks in and helps reduce that key. That way if you don't flux or if you don't key pulse, um, it's not too bad, big of a penalty you're taking just because this is active. And again, with this one, this is for basically you taking damage while dealing damage. So for this, for this, um, I'll just have this active uh, just because, for one, I'm not in heavy armor. So a lot of the techniques I'm going to show you um, may not be at its fullest just because, again, I'm not in heavy armor. I'm only in, like, maybe light or mid armor. I think I'm in light armor. So um, just know that. Just know that, you know, like I said, again, I say all the techniques I'm going to show you and everything I'm going to use, certain techniques are not going to be at their fullest just because I'm not in a, a, a um, toughness and stuff. But, um, yeah, that goes over every one of the skills. Um, if you would like, take a picture of the skill tree to see which skills I selected and which ones I use and stuff. But um, I'm going to go to the um, skill setup screen and then we'll hop into to some gameplay. So, we come here to our skill setup tree, and um, obviously you can see Dragon Horns already equipped. That's standard. I'm not going with Grapple because it does. It's no point. I'm going to grapple Yokai anyway because I can't use Dragon Horn on them. So, um, it's better to have Dragon Horn active. That way, when you do grapple human enemies, you get the anima back, and you're just going to do a regular grapple on Yokai, so it doesn't matter. 
Uh, Shifty Serenity, of course, because of the Waking Winds. Um, here, Twin Moons. Yes, Twin Moons every time. Um, much better having this there than Waking Winds just because you want to do as much damage as possible. So having Twin Moons here is the go-to. Um, here, this is personal preference. Truthfully, like between any other weapon, I can give you a certain indefinite thing that I would use. But with these alone, these are personal preference. It all depends on how you want to set your combos up. Do you want to go from um, high stance to mid stance? Um, or do you want to go from mid stance to high stance? I mean, or, or you, do you want to go from high stance to low stance? It's all depending on what you want to do. So, for example, with this, uh, Sunset Breeze, man, basically would put me in. Uh, this would pretty much put me in. Um, mid stance basically from it says right here allows you to follow, follow a strong attack from high or low stance with a quick attack from mid stance so basically this will put me in um, mid stance using this technique or I could go with this to put me in uh, to put me back in um, I think low stance yeah so this will put me in mid stance and this will put me into low stance basically so from a heavy attack, I would rather go to low stance because usually heavy attacks and high stance deal um, use a lot of key. So that way, since I'm using a lot of key in high stance, I'll go to mid stance, which uses the least amount of key. That way, um, once I go to mid, like low stance and stuff, I can dodge around and then boom, switch to mid stance. Um, imperative strike is the only one that goes there, so that's what you're gonna use. Now for this. I like to use Moonlit Snow in high stance because since Moonlit Snow is my highest damaging move, um, high stance just seems right for it. For it, Crashing Waves, of course, Crashing Waves every time. Um, swirling Snow or Devastating Rush. I'm going to go Devastating Rush just because, again, I say Swirling Snow is, is Snow is good, but in my opinion, Devastating Rush just works much better. Um, now we go here. This is Waking Winds Earth. This allows you to follow up a quick attack from uh, from high or mid stance with a strong attack from low stance. So um, with this, since I'm in mid stance and um, I want to continue a combo with the maximum amount of damage, I'm going to choose uh, Heaven to put me back in high stance. Now this right here, some mid stance, again, I'm going to try to put myself in high stance from mid stance just because I want to continue my attacks so boom that's going in uh, that's going to put me back in high stance and pair to strike again uh, moonlit snow this time I'm going moonlit snow redux the reason why is because in mid stance mid stance is pretty much my combo stance high stance is pretty much my damage stance and then low stance is my um, evasion stance so moonlit snow redux in mid stance just because I like the faster movement and when you're in mid stance you're pretty much on an even basis of movement like you're 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 pretty much even in movement so moonlit snow redux is is good in mid stance in my opinion now cuckoo's call you can do this but I'm not I'm going crashing waves uh, reason why is because again crashing waves you put masterful slice on that which increases your key damage by 20% you're gonna just destroy enemy key so that with uh with masterful slice perfect combo in. Uh, with this again I'm gonna go with Devastating Rush and honestly how about this I'll do Swirling Snow just to show you guys how it works in combat and then I keep Devastating Rush here Bolting Boar gotta keep that now here we're gonna go with um, we're gonna go with should I go with Man Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I gotta go with man anyway. Really, because I don't want to put myself in high stance. So, yeah, I'll go with man because this will put me in mid stance. That's perfectly fine. And then this says this stays as man as well because it'll put me in mid stance. Uh, Tiger Blade stays there because it's the only one that works. Imperative, Imperative Strike stays there, only one that works. Uh, with this. I could go retrograde flow. I could go ground quake, um, and go moonless snow, moonless snow redux. I'll go ground quake just to have you know a little bit of variety. All right, crashing waves is the same. Swirling snow, nah, devastating rush for that, and that would be all the skills. So, um, again, in high stance, 
but well, let's start from the top. I have Dragonhorn for my grapple. My Mystic Art is Sif uh, Shifting Serenity. If you have Mystic Dyad on your Dachi, you can use both Mystic Arts, so it wouldn't matter which one you have active, but I'm using Shifting Serenity for now. Twin Moves as my finisher in high stance. Sunset Breeze that puts me in low stance from high stance is pretty is uh, really good. That way, you know, I'm saving key as much as possible. Um, Imperator Strike is your pretty much um, EI, but um, with the Odachi. So that's the only technique that can go on the R1 in circle. Moonless Snow because high stance, like I said, is my high damage in stance. So Moonless Snow is definitely going to be my go-to whenever I'm in high stance. Crashing Waves to destroy the key on enemies. Swirling Snow. Uh, like I said, I'm just going to show you guys how this works, but more than likely I will use Devastating Rush instead of Swirling Snow. Waking Winds. This will put me um, this will put me in high stance. That way I can you know continue the combo from high stance and then uh, deal a good amount of damage. Again, this right here also put me in high stance. Um, Parrot Strike, same. Moonless Snow Redux. It's faster than the regular Moonless Snow, so I put it in uh, mid stance just because that's what my combo stance is. I want to get them off as fast as possible, and Moonless Snow Redux works very well in mid stance, in my opinion. Crashing Waves again, key damage. Devastating Rush is what I would go with in the try and whole triangle um, slot for both of the for all three, honestly. But again, I'm just you know keeping that for now. Bolting Boar, good for con uh, good for countering. Um, also works against certain yokai. Uh, Waking Winds Man and Sunset Breeze Man, these will put me back in mid stance, which is good for low stance because you want to go from low to mid because low is your um, evasion stance and mid is your combo stance. So going from low to mid is very good. Uh, we got Tiger's Blade. Tiger's Blade helps me get behind my enemy while also attacking them in a downward slash. Not bad technique at all. Um, same pair, that's the same. Ground Quake, uh, just to put some variety. I probably would just go with Moonless Snow Redux right here, but just to have a little bit of variety in my techniques, I just went with uh, Ground Quake. Uh, uh, Crash Away is the same, and Devastating Rush is the same. So, if you want to see which techniques I'm using, um, you can probably slow the video down, maybe pause it, you know, see which one I have in set and everything. But this is what I would go with with the Odachi. And I'm going to show you guys a little bit of how we use the techniques and stuff. And then we'll get up out of here. But yeah. All right. Let's do it. So again, with the Odachi, being in low stance is not something that you want to do. You don't want to attack really in low stance with the Odachi. You more so want to use low stance as your evasion um, and attack in mid and high stance. Uh, if you do end up attacking in low stance, it's fine. It's not like you're going to die or anything. It's just that the Odachi attacks are supposed to be super powerful and slow. So um, getting the most out of the Odachi would be in mid and high stance, in my opinion. But again, like you can use low stance if you want to. That's perfectly fine. It's no problem with it. But yeah, let's do it. See right there, like as you can see, I tried to do the the uh, the swirling snow, and he literally just got up under me, and you know, knocked me out. Boom! There we go. Like it worked. Like I said, it works. I told you before, it definitely works. It's just a technique that you have to be, you know, be careful when using. And as you can see, my key, like, look at my key. Whenever I'm attacking, I can only do but so many attacks at once before my key is completely drained. Just because the Odachi takes up so much key when attacking.
and you see how fast that moonless snow redux is this is a regular moonless snow charged up that's a lot of damage it does and this is a moonless snow redux it's so much faster allows you to combo out it faster beautiful And that's that with him. But yeah, Yodachi's not a bad weapon at all. I actually like the Odachi. Um it's not very it's not bad at all. When I made an Odachi build, I have one on my channel. If you want to look at it, go check it out. It's called the Lightning God. But when I made my Odachi build, I actually had pretty fun. I had pretty uh I, I, I had fun with it. It was it was pretty fun. So um I definitely recommend this 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 weapon if you're looking for a weapon to use. Maybe you don't want to be generic. And maybe you don't want to be like everyone else and use just a sword or dual sword or, you know, you don't want to be like everyone else. Odachi, I would definitely recommend for sure. No questions. But now we're going to fight our yokai and see how that goes. as you can see every time I dodge I'm in low stance I try my I get in low stance whenever I'm trying to attack I'm always in high stance or mid Oh, I didn't mean to do that one. He's probably gonna die now, honestly. And that's it. But yeah, um, as you can see, I, I try to do techniques that I know that I'm going to be able to kill enemies with. Um, if you want to get flashy, you can incorporate your um yokai abilities and all that stuff in there um shit you can even spam the same technique over and over and over again and it will work perfectly fine it all depends on your play style but me personally these are the techniques i will use and this is how i would approach my fights but um thank you guys again for showing for showing so much support i appreciate you um i appreciate all the love i've been getting all the comments and all the interactions i've been getting with everyone thank you so much again if you guys are liking these videos please let me know if you're not let me know if you want to see something different let me know if you like how i'm doing it and formatting these and you know continue with the series let me know i'm always here always here to answer i try to get back to anybody who you know leaves a comment as soon as i possibly can um I just hit 700 subs, so I wanted to say that, and I thank everyone who subbed. It means so much to me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, but I'll, I'll see you guys in the next one. Make sure you stop by the channel. Check it out. Leave me comments. And Kim Red Diamonds, I'm out.